Yeah, 1001 is the newest chapter. I think there was a break this week because Jump Festa is going on right now in Japan, and that's basically like their their Comic Con. Uh, we usually get a bunch of trailers for anime and all this news coming up. One of the ones being One Piece, specifically the One Piece. It's real, guys. It's a remake uh, by Wit Studio, and they're in partnered with Netflix, I guess. Uh, I guess that makes sense since, um, you know, the live action. But um, that's going to be cool, man. We're, we're going back to Romance Dawn yet again. They're making you reread it or rewatch it in a sense. Yeah, and this is part of the 25th anniversary celebration for the anime. Dude, I, I got I to gotta tell you, like, just hearing the remake, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and everything. But, like, honestly, it feels like I'm going to read it all over again. And it just feels like such a chore, dude. It, yeah, I, I hope I hope it's gonna be, which is why I'm I'm really like curious to see what what it, like it's gonna look like. They, did they show any trailer or anything like that? No, the, it was just a, a super teaser trailer, which is on that that image I posted. It was the guy yeah. just drawing that. It's one piece. It's gonna be good, but we can only see like how 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 it's gonna take it. Who who was making it? Uh, yeah, it's Wit Studio. From what I saw, they've done like uh, they're doing the Spy Family movie coming out this year. A bunch of like other random stuff. Um, most of it live action too, which is interesting. Okay. Oh, they okay. They worked on the they worked on Attack on Titan. They're doing that Isekai anime with Harley Quinn. Oh, they did Vinland Saga as well. Mm. Mm. Oh, Ranking of Kings. I'm kind of down for it. Uh, looking at the new logo, kind of the if that's the energy they're going to be bringing to the this quote unquote remake, then uh, I'm down for it. There shouldn't be any filler, any bad pacing for it, so it should be pretty uh, smooth. Yeah, they've got a long way to go. The road has been mapped out already. Now we're just going to see what, what they're going to do with it. Yeah, I wonder how far they're going to go, because we've already seen you know, the East Blue Saga redone so many times. You know, the question is, are we just going to go past it? Which I'd be down for. I don't know. I know, like, the... I don't think we got anything for it, but there's the Naruto thing happening as well for the anniversary, where they're doing basically just what i think three ovas for it and it's just going to be a highlight of like the main parts of the series okay we're getting this trend nowadays with these new shonens uh with their animes i think it started with uh what did it start with jujutsu kaisen or demon slayer where they said with jjk it's like okay we'll make a movie for volume zero i was like yeah you know what that kind of makes sense since it's like a whole prequel thing you don't have to make that into the anime and then with demon slayer hey the infinity train arc let's make that into a movie i'm thinking yeah good choice you know that's like the probably the best arc of that series i get to give it a higher budget and then now they're doing it with chainsaw man and they're doing it with uh reze's arc i think it's just their answer for not wanting to having to continuously just make things season after season to them it's it's an easier excuse to make like a 90 minute runtime and just like map that as an arc really quick it, it's i think it's a lot easier for them to express what they want to do in that time if they have to plan it into the next season like it takes up a couple of episodes so it'll probably be like what like a three or four episode arc when again they can just make like a 90 or 120 minute runtime for something and then and from there you know have enough time to go into the next arc after that and you know possibly have another budget for uh you know a better season I think like fiscally it makes sense. I just hope it. I hope it stays as a movie because I know with Demon Slayer, uh, with that arc they just ended up doing it in the anime anyways, and they added like I think they added a couple extra scenes and like they, they spread it across I think like four episodes or something. Fujimoto said that that arc specifically was inspired by the anime movie Jinro, The Wolf Brigade. So seeing that become a movie just makes more sense after hearing that. Have you ever seen that movie yourself? I've I've always heard about that that title. I just I have no idea what it's about. It's like you remember when anime is back in the day, they used to have like really really good detail, like the anatomy of people. That's what that movie reminds me a lot about. I think mm. that that movie has like a a very memeable scene where there's like a like a jet fighter or something like that, and he's like bombing a city, and like you see his face, and it's just like a skeleton, or like it melts off or something like that. But yeah, I think it's on Amazon Prime. I think, it's, I think they've been on Amazon Prime. Like a lot of the old anime, like the retro 90s and... I'm sorry, the late 90s anime stuff, you know, like the adult movies and stuff like that you'll find on Amazon Prime. 
Yeah, I'm hyped for that. Um, Hell Paradise confirmed season two kind of thing, which is cool. Dude, I totally forgot they rebooted the Kenshin anime. And uh, they're doing the Kyoto arc next. And I was watching the trailer. It looks really clean, man. I was like, god damn it, I gotta go back and watch some Kenshin. I never really gave that much of a chance. It's really good, but, uh, you know, people will give you flack because of the mangaka. So. Yes, sir. But hey, hey, he paid yeah. his $2,000. He's out. Yeah. <laughs> he paid his bail. Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't get to keep the hard drive. He had, he had yeah, no, they, they, took, they took the hard drive, the DVDs. Oof, the TVTs. Okay. Maybe $2,000 wasn't enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like that shit's not going to go right back into his pocket when this when this other thing comes out, you know? Yeah. To me, it was more crazy that he was still drawing Kenshin, too. Like, that that was still going. Well, is it still going? Because when that happened, uh, they put the manga on hiatus and then i think it was after the trial was done and they said like oh you just have to pay the fine uh jump made a statement saying like oh yeah he'll be back uh in like two months or whatever back on his normal schedule and it's like what um i have no idea what the manga is about uh from i thought it was like just him remaking it with with like you know newer art style but i don't know what would the plot even be about at this point yeah yeah i don't know i liked how this this was being teased and said like do people even care about this series still? Is a Blue Exorcist, if you guys remember that, we're getting that, we're finally getting a new season, which uh, is pretty crazy that that's happening after at least ten years ago was when the anime ended. Yeah, it wasn't bad either, so I'm yeah, I'm not hyped, but I'm kind of glad it's bringing back around. Yeah, I I fell off a long time ago, but it was it was still pretty cool from where I left off and. What I understand with the anime, it when it finished, the ending was still canon to whatever arc that was in. So, they, yeah, they, they could just pick it back up. Um, and then, yeah, there was like a Bleach teaser for, you know, the this next part of the anime, which I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Oh, the finale, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it's the finale at this point, because this, like, this, this next part is the part that I was not looking forward to, <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, I saw Ichigo's already fighting... Um, you watch or whatever how you pronounce his name the biggest thing though that i saw was like one of the early things we only got a poster for it i don't think i i'll put it in the discord right now but january i think it's i want to say the 19th but for sure it's in january it's going to be on netflix and amazon prime but monsters is finally coming out oh dude if you don't know what that is that is the one shot uh oda did before one piece and ended up making it canon by it being Ryuma, right? Because Ryuma is such a big play into the past of One Piece. This is basically about him. And we're finally going to get that next month. It's going to be so hype. I need to hop on that and check it out. I know it's good. But I want to see it just so that way whenever, when I, when I watch this, I want to see what Oda's going to do. Because if he's going to come in and like maybe add some stuff to it to make it more with One Piece... Yeah, if he added like little little characters here and there from it, that'd be pretty pretty cool. From vice versa, I mean, like if you see like just a random character from the One Piece world somewhere down the line, maybe hopefully you see uh, somebody from Monsters. I don't know. I'll probably give it a read. Yeah, I just never went around to go read. I just know that. Like I'm like, yeah, I know like Ryuma's in there, and so it is time to reread. Honestly, you gotta you just gotta go through the motions. It's kind of a bitch. It's like cleaning your house from top to bottom, but it's good for the mind. It's good for the jargon. You know, you gotta. Just got to reread One Piece, man. Oh, yeah. You always got to find the new stuff. God damn it. You're telling me I have to reread it now. Can I just wait for the for the anime remake? I mean, that's who knows. I mean, it's a remake, but they're not remaking the pace. Uh, I think my favorite part was we got we got a letter from Oda for Jump Festa, and he was talking about, like, looking forward to the next year. And it's like, oh, yeah, the anime Egghead Islands, you know, we're going to start. It's going to be great. And he's talking about mon the manga. He says, oh, yeah, I can't wait for this to happen with that. But if this person fights that person, how is it going to end? I don't yeah. know. Will they actually go to that island next? We'll see. God damn it, Oda. <laughs> and it's like, God damn it, Oda. Um, I think Jump Festa is still going on, but... I don't know if I'm really hyped for anything else. Uh, the last big thing for me was uh, they announced a Hunter Hunter fighting game is happening. The, it, it's weird. They said it's going to be a full fighting game. What is full? Whatever that means. Uh, but looking at uh, who's working on it, 
Uh, the studio did a bunch of anime fighting games. So they did the Zatch Bell one. They did the Ninja Clash games. Ah, oh, dude. Ah, uh, dude. Okay, but Axis needs to be involved. Like, it needs to look like DBZ Fighters. That that fucking gets me hard. You talk about like those those old school anime fighting games, and they're all they're all like figments of Bandai Namco. You know, of course, Just, like trying yeah. with different things. Yeah, and honestly, like that that would be really cool. Like, I'm looking forward to some to something like that. Yeah, and the team you know? um, they helped with like oh Marvel three. So it's like oh okay, so maybe this is what they mean by full fighting game. It's gonna be a real one. Not not an anime arena fighter like all the other stuff coming out. The way Tekken and Street Fighter are, or, or so I'm still kind of confused on full fighting game. For some reason, I'm thinking of Sifu, and I'm like, no, no. I think <laughs> I think like if when they say full fighting game, they don't mean like Burning Blood, the Ninja Storm series, uh, the My Hero One Justice games, the new Jujutsu Kaisen game coming out. It's it's a two v two fighter, but it's like an anime arena fighter. So I think they just mean like it's going to be like fighters where it'll be just a, a normal fighting game. One more thing about fighters. Did you did you see that uh, Guilty Gear is adding a, a 3v3? Oh, yeah, that's crazy. But it's like I think it'll be different from fighters where it'll be more like uh, like maybe three active fighters at the same time. Th- that, that's a mode in, in uh, DBZ as well. Nobody really plays it because you have to go to a different lobby for it. But yeah, like you can team up with two other people. That's fucking sick, bro. That'll be something, dude, honestly. I can imagine just the cheese, bro. So yeah, that's going to be hype, man. I mean, you know, Hunter Hunter definitely has the flair to be a good fighting game. So I hope they, they do some wild stuff in there. And, you know, let's get even crazier, dude. Throw in some Yu Yu Hakusho characters because you can, okay? I've been playing Valhalla the new god of war dlc yeah it's it's pretty cool uh i like it it's, it is very much a rogue light uh you do your runs you open your chest you get like your different rewards you have to pick some there's some challenges here and there um there's like a burden aspect that pops up later to where it's like oh yeah you know higher risk higher reward kind of situation i've been enjoying it it's it's definitely getting like tougher i'm you know like i think i shook in enough rust off but still like some of the boss fights in there it's it gets a little crazy. Roguelikes are no joke, man. I can't wait to see how it is in God of War universe. Like from what you've been telling me and from what I've been seeing, it, it's kind of like what I what I expected, imagined at least. Like, yeah, you you keep your weapons. I don't know if you were like find them within the rounds or something, but I'm glad you start with them all and the combos because like combos are everything. Just the fact that you find like all your other stuff like within it's pretty nice. I think I got spoiled already for some of the fights. I kind of want to see how they get there. I missed all the dialogue in the fight, so it's like... Oh, okay. It's like I, I didn't see how we got there. I just see the fight itself, but it, that's fine. Yeah, I got spoiled pretty hard. Okay, it's time to download it now before I see any more crazy stuff. Honestly. Before, it, you know, the whole thing just gets really... At that point, I had to do the same thing. I was like, it's, it's just... You just got to go through it. Because I'm like, oh, thanks, YouTube thumbnail again for almost spoiling <laughs> the game. Um, but yeah, there there is a story here. It's it's the epilogue to Ragnarok, or yeah, to Ragnarok, like like uh, Oscar was saying last week. It, it is interesting. So yeah, you do start with all three weapons, but at the one of the first rewards you get is your weapon path. Basically, it says, oh, you which weapon do you want to lean more towards during this run? For the m- most of the rewards that are weapon based, will be for the one you pick. So either the blades, the axe, or the spear. It it, it makes sense because some of the side stuff is all about. Oh, you're mastering stuff. Uh, you're, you're proving your worth to Valhalla with the mastery of your weapons. Because, you know, that's the place for great warriors to have their final rest. So, yeah, all those challenges. Um, you can unlock all the armor, but it's all cosmetic. You know, just so that way you have the fresh fits, which is cool. And they finally added the coat he wears. Like, the that black bear oh, yeah. skin that he wears in the beginning that's not wearable in the game. Like, that's finally in here. So you can have that as a cosmetic. They added they added a lot into this mode. I thought it was just gonna be something simple, but no, there's there's a lot going on. Yeah, super cool for them to make it free too. Santa Monica Studios showing other studios how it's done. Dude, this this is packed, dude. Like I'm surprised this was free. I won't say much, but yeah, I I do have to eat my words that I said last week about like what I didn't think was gonna be in this because I thought like there's no way like I don't think Santa Monica really wants to dive into there, and I was kind of wrong. For most yeah, hell of yeah, you were wrong. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how are they not gonna t- like, bro? This this would be the epitome of what I wanted in the first game. What we wanted when he went to um, what Helheim? 
Helheim, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you just you just imagine to yourself, you're just like, all right, Zeus is going to come out in ghost form. We do this shit one more time. We'll fuck up my dad. And you're just like, no, it didn't get to happen. <laughs> I don't think that they'll actually bring any of those Poseidon, Hades, or Zeus as like an actual boss in the game. But I think that you'll definitely like have a lot of like interactions and like nostalgic like puzzles that you have to redo and resolve from like the first three games and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I fought a boss today. I was like, oh, okay. Did not expect that, and it, it was a pretty good boss fight. Looking as looking forward to seeing what else is going to be happening in here. We pretty much got a leak for the time frame, anyways, of the the Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC for Elden Ring. It's um, it's some collab with like a controller company, I think. And they said like, oh yeah, you get to uh, sync it with the with the Shadow of the Earth Tree expansion or whatever in February 2024. Fuck, that's too far. Yeah, it's far, but you know what? It's closer than I was uh, thinking. Which also think I'm like, yeah, if it's February, why didn't we see anything at Game Awards? You know, again, just doesn't make sense. I'm kind of glad though. Like we're not seeing much about it. I- I'm just like, just the release date is is fine. Again, I say all that with the hopes of it not getting pushed back further. I'm kind of glad I'm not getting spoiled. Like, the fact that we only got this one little drawing of the new One Piece anime, too. Like, I, I like that because I- I'm not I'm not seeing what it's going to look like, which means I'm not having any um, initial... Yeah, I'm not having initial bias for... Um, uh, for the Elden, DLC? For, yeah, for the DLC. So, it's... I'm, I- I'm hyped. And I've, I'm not going to lie, the hype has died down within uh, the recent years just because, like, the lack of content... Uh, yeah, we got arenas, but it's like we hardly play that. It's only when somebody speaks up and we're like, "All right, let's settle this on the battlefield." But other than that, we pretty much did everything in Elden Ring. So it's like the hype is is kind of dying down, but it, um, but still, there's like a new hype forming with like the fact that this took a while to for the DLC to come out. It it has to be good. Square Enix hasn't, or FromSoft <laughs> hasn't uh <laughs> let me down so far with that. The DLCs for for Dark Souls two, even the, the much shit as that game gets, were fucking immaculate, man. Same thing with three, and uh, and yeah, with all the rest of them, dude, they were all good. The old hunters was good, so I really wish they made another DLC besides the old hunters. Me too. That would have been cool. Like every every one of them seemed to have gotten like two or three. Yeah, honestly, uh, but we got Bloodborne cards, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah that's the, the unofficial <laughs> well somebody gave us bloodborne cart <laughs> yeah that's what happened <laughs> they were they were so starved for the content that they followed the meme and we got content so thank you yeah i wonder if that was just the sony thing of only one dlc for bloodborne the because all the dark souls they're all just bandai right being published yeah it's bandai bandai namco i don't know did sekiro get expansions too it did let me check that's Activision. I don't right? think it got an expansion, but I know it got DLCs. I just think it's funny the um, that we got the Elden Ring link from a company called Thrustmaster. Because <laughs> when we saw, we're like, "What the hell is Thrustmaster?" It's like, "Oh no, that's real." It's like, "What?" That's what they. Okay. Oh, I know. Okay, I've I've seen this company before. They're the ones where you can um, where like the the face buttons and the analog stick on each side, you could just take those out and flip them around or swap them. Kind of modable controller? Yeah, it's called the e-swap controller. Oh. You can swap out your build on Elden Ring while swapping out your build on your controller, dude. <laughs> That's, That's right. so cool. So, like, if you if you like PlayStation with the two analog sticks, you can do that. But if you're, like, if you want the Xbox thing, you could just lift the left side and then literally just flip it and insert it back. Yeah, hot swap technology. Oh, God. Oh, I didn't know you could do it like that, too. You could just have both analogs on one side. <laughs> Oh what? <laughs> what? Wait, 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 wait! I need to see this. What should the fuck, dude? Here, I'll post the image on the on the Discord. That's funny. That is not That's an cr- image file. What the hell? Oh, okay, so the face buttons stay on the controller, but the um, yeah, the D pad and the analog sticks, you could swap those out. Oh damn! Yeah, the controller is like one sixty. One sixty. The the other controller, the um, the PlayStation Pro controller, the it's like two hundred bucks. Yeah, what? I, for, I forget the what. Oh, called? that's right. Yeah, I know, like the the custom or the like the Xbox Pro controllers or whatever they're called. They're they're around that same price too. Man, two that two analog sticks on one side is crazy. <laughs> it's so funny that that can. But you know like what that. sounds interesting? Having the analog sticks on the back. Yeah, it does have four buttons on the back as well. The gaming industry is just changing shit up. It is like accessibility options. I I, I guess no more crab claw playing. 
We could save your hands. We have the technology. <laughs> New info for the Death Stranding movie. It's going to be from A24. Fucking hype. That makes so much sense. I'm so I'm so glad this is in the best hands possible. Like Kojima's not directing it. I think he's going to be the executive producer or whatever. Oh god. It's just I need to see his name on the big screen. Yeah. I like uh, very first or the very last. If it doesn't say a Hideo Kojima movie, like <laughs> <sighs> I need my applause, man. I can I can't even say anything, man. I think this is going to actually make me start playing it. I've yeah, been I've been thinking like god, I I, I kind of want to get back in. Do you think I'll be able to like access your paths, or is it like randomized? When when you're first loaded into the world, it it's kind of randomized of of what pops up. I don't know if it has a priority over like your friends list or not. Pretty sweet because you just beat the game for me if that's the case. <laughs> yeah, their innovative approach to storytelling aligns with what Kojima Productions has been doing for the last eight years, is what Kojima said, and I'm like, well, yeah, I could see like if it was like a big studio, it's like, yeah, I, I get it, they just want the IP. But it's A24, it's like, oh no, yeah, Kojima saw this, like, no, it has to be A24. They're down, we're down. Dude, all those posts about him watching A24 films finally paid off. That's all I saw was on Instagram, was his, his fucking playlist on a on an MP3 player and his movies. Most of them were, like, A24 films. I'm like, I remember early on thinking, like, man, Kojima should just get a movie here. He's mentioned before it's not going to be a direct adaptation of the game. It's going to kind of be its own thing for fans and newcomers to enjoy. So I wonder what that means. Like, is it going to be Sam Porter Bridges? Can we get Norman Reedus back again to do this movie? Because I, I think he has to. Oh, definitely. By the way, I did catch up to one, uh, 1101. Oda has made us aware that there is, uh, there is a Nika. This chapter kind of makes me open to the idea that there's going to be more than one interpretation of Nika. Basically, there are going to be like other Luffy's. Like descendants, you mean? Not really like descendants, just like, I don't want to use the word clones because that makes it seem like like they're like a literal exact same oh, as okay. Luffy. I, I, I think I see what you're saying. The way, the way I would see it is Nika is like the dream of everybody to rebel against like the Celestials or whatever. Right, and maybe that dream was so strong in society that, um, sure, we got the the Nika fruit, but maybe like some of that also translated into other fruits, to where they could get tapped in, like what we saw with with Bonnie in this chapter. She just visualized what I mean, honestly, she visualized what Kuma looks like, which um, in turn is something similar to what Luffy can do. Right, so maybe it's like, oh, maybe there is some Nika into her fruit, which I guess kind of makes sense. But that that's some weird shit I could see Oda doing too, since there's um, what do they call like class classifications, like the sub genres of Devil yeah, Fruits? the models, uh, yeah, models, yeah, the yeah. models, models. Yeah, so I could I could see like yeah, some Nika leaking in here and there, into <laughs> some very obscure fruits. It's just a mythic type, right? It's just a mythic. Uh... Mythic, the mythic classification. Is it? The model? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's just uh, a Logia, it? isn't it? No, but Myth- the type of fruit. Yeah, like, isn't it like a mythical think of Sengoku. Logia? Yeah, like think of Sengoku. He, he's a mythical class Zoan type fruit because his is the Buddha fruit, right? Where yeah. Chopper's is just not really mythical. He's just, he, he's got the uh, yeah. human human fruit. Yeah, the, the wiki says it's probably a mythical. But yeah, that's 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 a good interpretation of the, of what I, of what I was saying, Danny. Like I, I really do feel like with with this chapter, it, it broadens the perspective that we can definitely have like not like I said, not clones, but more like uh, I don't know, like offshoots of Luffy. That would Bonjour would be like the Luffy of her crew, mm. obviously because she's a captain, right? Well, she doesn't really have a crew anymore, but yeah. I could see it being something like with Vegapunk when he split his brain and there's like all the different versions of him. Like say Bonnie awakens her devil fruit. Is she going to have something like kind of like Luffy's, but it's like her variation? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that too, for sure. One other thing that I wanted to point out about this chapter, it's like super small. The second or third page, uh, Kuma's just like looking at Luffy. Oh, when he's 16? Uh, Yeah, when he's 16 and like, just just the way that the art style it looks so much now like there's a there's just a fucking panel on this page uh, like luffy like almost senses him and he like tries to look at him in that little thing when he's turning to the to the side you don't see his face but you see his hair and i was thinking to myself is that fucking ace 
Is that just Ace sitting, just just like hanging around while Luffy's doing his training? And I was like, no, he left already. And I'm like, damn, why the fuck does his hair look like that? He didn't have his fucking he didn't have his fucking hat on at that point, you know. So it's like, who else am I gonna think but Ace? Like, you didn't you didn't give him a shirt. <laughs> That's all he ever does. There was a silhouette in a flashback uh, during Wano, and everybody was trying to figure out like, oh, who is that? And everyone was thinking like, oh, maybe it's like Yamato, Yamato, because you know this is in the past or whatever. Uh, Oda revealed after Film Red came out, it's like, oh no, that one panel. Uh, one tiny panel, yeah, that was Uta. Like that's that was her first debut. Was in the manga as a silhouette, and I was like, "Oh, cool, bro." I guess he can't just say that, and and kind of makes sense. I guess he can just say that. <laughs> Isn't that some shit, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's gonna be interesting to see like uh, Bonnie uh, having like more like doing more stuff after this flashback and seeing like what what her powers can do. Like the fact that she could do like a gear third arm, basically is is pretty crazy honestly i just that just got me thinking like um who else can we see like i get like small instances of chopper you know like chop like not to say that he's he's going to be doing anything like that but just the fact that he's he's also a zone type fruit but he can do like the little shape shifting points i i would think it'd have to be like some obscure fruits like that go down the line that would like give you yeah that would just give you attributes that would look that you would think nika would use like the stuff we see luffy done during the uh kaido fight you know maybe some stuff there is like okay well let's look back and think of what kind of fruit would do something similar we're probably gonna see a bunch of new characters too that are gonna have some crazy stuff we haven't seen oh imagine i actually don't want to but it's okay fucking new characters that are still on par like if i like i'm don't get me wrong that does excite me of course but it also makes me feel like, how many times is Luffy going to run into somebody like Katakuri? And then I'm like, like you could tell they were on par with each other. Like, yeah, like it was like it was just a battle that he barely won. How many more times am I going to see that happen? It doesn't have to happen every single arc. Give him some breathing room. He's already fighting Luchi. You know, I can already tell he's going to beat Luchi. But I don't need Luchi to get, like, some dumbass power up and be like, this is what I've been doing while you were, like, fucking, fucking around for two years or her, her. If that fucking bird... I don't even know. If that, if that fucking pigeon he's hanging out with turns out to be somebody, like an actual thing <laughs> yeah, that like yeah. transforms or something. <laughs> this is the actual leader of CP9, this fucking bird. <laughs> or CP0, I'm sorry. Yeah, that'd be so funny. Like, oh yeah, like that he, like he's an actual like Zoan user. Or like the, what is, what is that thing? The, the shadow thing? What is his name? Ika? Ika or Ika? Ika? Oh, uh, oh, em- uh, Emu. That would be funny if Emu is just like watching through the pigeon. Like, that's part of his power or something like that? Oh, yeah, I guess uh, this kind of confirms that, like, yeah, like, Bonnie is a little bit younger than, I guess, we thought she was. But she's not as young as everybody was theorizing. Because everybody kept thinking, like, oh, maybe she's just, like, maybe she's really only, like, 10, like, this whole time or whatever. And it's like, uh, I don't, like, the timeline doesn't match up, but probably, like, 16 or something. No, I think she's 12. Because when, I, when, I, when we went back to, what was it, 1097 or 1096, when we first started all these flashbacks, it was like seven years ago, five years ago. Yeah. Like, also, like, so forth and so forth. And then by the time that I saw, I think it was the last time time skip for that one. What is she, 18 now? I think she's like 15 or something. I'm sure somebody already did the math. Yeah. If we look at the wiki, I'm sure somebody already did the math. Ow. Oh. Oh. Ooh, you were right. You called it. Oh, okay. Well, technically, we were both right. So when we <laughs> first meet Bonnie, she's ten, and then after the time skip, she's twelve. No, they're wrong because Luffy. The way the timeline goes is Luffy is sixteen in this in the new chapter. Yeah, and I think it said this was four years ago or three years ago. So he's nineteen. Well, so no, so yeah, so he's sixteen. He doesn't leave until he's seventeen, which is a year later. So Bonnie would have to be eleven. Bonnie's nine in this chapter. No, she's ten. No, she's nine in this chapter. At the end of the chapter, she's nine. So at the beginning of the chapter, she's eight. Okay, I thought yeah, she was ten. Okay, nine I keep thinking 10. of because Kuma kept mentioning like her tenth birthday uh, in this whole flashback. Yeah, thanks. So she's God. It makes so me feel means- so bad. So yeah, so she's like, she's ten, and then so she, then she's oh so she's twelve right now. Okay, yeah. So you know what? You know what? They're right. I guess yeah, the the One Piece theories are right. But dude, that ma- that makes me feel so bad. She's just a little twelve year old girl. This would be different. This is different. <laughs> I see what you did, Oda. I see what you did. 
That's fucked up, though. I'm just letting you know. Because now, now, now her personality has to match a 12-year-old, but it doesn't. She's just an adult. I don't know. I should reread Sabote Archipelago. That means that part where she was, where she saved Zoro, remember? Uh, and she shrunk herself down. Oh, yeah. That was her real, that was her real age. Oda reminds me of, uh, I guess you say Robert Jordan in a way. I've, I've been, you know, the Wheel of Time author. I've been reading his, his books. And there's this, uh, this guy Mike's book reviews on YouTube. Cool guy. I've been watching his reviews, and he's uh, one of the points he keeps bringing up is, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say this is a PG-13 story, but it could get pretty dark. It's just the way it's written doesn't make you think like it could get pretty dark. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's kind of like One Piece. Like surface level doesn't look like it could get pretty dark, but you get to these flashbacks, boy, and yeah, it gets pretty heavy. Yeah, and that's that. that's why One Piece is so great. God, fucking One Piece is so great. Paramecia users are awesome. No way this is real. <laughs> okay, wait, who is this? See, this is why this is why I love fighting games. Just popped up on my Twitter right now. This guy says starting December twenty second, early access. This guy's doing a fan project of Roblox as a fighting game. <laughs> A Roblox fighting game? <laughs> yeah. What happened to the Serial Killers fighting game, bro? I want that shit to still come out. Oh, man. God. Don't even. <laughs> that thing is, uh... That thing was dead for years. To the adjustments that he made. I'm looking at the comments. It's just like, doesn't it look like this combo does a little low? Oh, and it's like, well, you're in time stop, so obviously the scaling has to go down. Since it's, it's only a one meter uh, thing you can do. That'd be too easy. Or whatever he said. So thank you for listening. As always, remember unversepodcast gmail.com. If you have any questions or comments, we would love to bring those up on future episodes.